Hello friends, welcome to Dry Stories episode 2. It's an amazing sunny day in South Africa here from Cape Town where I'm doing my dry today. Welcome, I hope you'll enjoy the show. Friends, today I'll just be teaching you some basic skills on drying a steak to perfection. Every time, last week in Dry Stories episode 1, we looked at making a fire and drying some chops in a basic way. As I told you the last time, as the program progresses, we will get more into detail, doing trickier things as we go along. But friends, it's a beautiful day, the fire is going, and it is time to pour a nice white wine to celebrate love, life for the one you love and enjoying a nice braai. I will now be sharing a really, really nice story with you. Friends, so um, I uh, went to boarding school from a very young age because the farm where I grew up on was very far from the local town. And normally if my father came to fetch us, we would come with a pickup truck and we would all get on the back, my two brothers and I. And uh, normally in those days, my father was a young man, so he was always in a rush, and in a hurry. So when we would leave the school, we would normally start to pick up quite a lot of speed as soon as we hit the gravel road. And guys, I will never forget, as we were sitting on the back of the pickup, and as my father would accelerate, we would eventually have a puff of dust behind us, looking like the SpaceX going into space. And we were just flying over the earth. And this one particular day, we were still driving at this high speed on the gravel road, and we could feel the pickup was losing speed, so we knew immediately there was something happening in the front of the road. And be it as it may, as soon as we could stick our heads out and see what's in the front there, we thought it must be some kind of an angel. And we were actually right. It just so happens to be the most beautiful blonde in the whole area. And she was kind of stopping my dad, who came to a standstill next to her. And as we stopped, she said, Uncle, tomorrow night there is going to be a fantastic dance with some poiky food and this is in these big black pots that we have here in south africa and why don't you and your family come to this dance and inside myself i was about 16 at the time i was just thinking please dad please just say that we will be going and eventually he said to her okay we will see you there the next night we ended up at this dance and they prepared there for hundreds of people there weren't that many people, so I was lucky enough to end up dancing with this amazing, beautiful woman for the entire night. Surely a night to remember. But friends, that reminds me of a Bry story back in those days. I will be showing you in another episode of, of Bry stories how to create a great poiki in a basic way, having success time and time again. But now I will be getting ready so we can pre prepare the steak that we will be frying today. Friends, it's now about half an hour before we will put the meat on the dry. And what I normally do is, I just take these steaks, and I'm sure you can agree with me that these steaks look beautiful. Friends, just a tip, I got these fresh from my butcher, but if you get your steaks from your, your local supermarket in a vacuum pack bag or so, my suggestion is take it out a day or at least a few hours before you dry out of the vacuum pack bag, rinse it under fresh running water and pat it dry with a um, kitchen towel. Friends, so as you can see, the steaks looks really beautiful. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse it generously with olive oil. In South Africa, we then also really, really like to put freshly crushed black pepper on the steak. And many times this is how we dry the steaks, but Optionally, you can also add your favorite meat spice. In my case, I quite like this one. So I will generously also add that over the top. Now I'm gonna turn these beautiful steaks over so that the flavors can get into the meat. And I will also repeat the process on this side. Friends, you will see that this is a really quick process. Dry is generally back to basics. If you're dealing with good quality meat, you just want to make sure that you get the bare basics on your meat. And now on this side as well, I will add the spice. Friends, I'm not going to add salt to the steak because the salt I will add on the steak just before I put it on the grill. There's a lot of arguments whether you should put the salt on the steak when it's in your plate, 
whether you should put it on the feet just before you take it off. But in my experience, friends, I just like adding the salt before I put it on the fry, very lightly. And then the flavors of the salt can go into the meat. And um, I'll get back to you in about uh, half an hour or so when we put the meat on the fire. In the meantime, I'm gonna put the grid on and I'm gonna make sure it is nice and clean in preparation for my fry. Okay, friends, so I have spread the coals open. First of all, my coals here, if I put my hand here, one, two, three. It's about three pounds hot where I have to take my hand away. For me, steaks have to be about 20 millimeters thick to fry them to perfection every time. So if I put them on this heat, some of us in my household like the steak medium rare. So I will put one steak on there for medium rare and another one on for medium. Friends, so what I will do with a medium rare steak is I will only turn it over once. So it fries once on that side and once on that side. Whereas for the medium one, I will fry it twice on each side. So friends, it's about four minutes later now. And as you can see, look how beautiful that steak looks. In about another three to four minutes, this medium rare steak will be ready. And I will put it in a mildly hot casserole on the side. Okay, friends. So this steak has been on for four minutes on each side. You can agree with me, it looks beautiful. And I put it in, a, in, a, in this thing, which is now about room temperature. You don't want this to be too hot. Otherwise, your steak is going to get overcooked inside here. So friends, next thing is now for the steak, I want medium. I'm just going to literally put it for one minute on either side, just giving it a little bit more heat. And then I will also put it in the pan. Friends, so this steak has been turned over once. So it has now been exactly 10 minutes on the fire. This is the one we want medium cooked. So I will also put it in the pan. And friends, now it is very important to rest the steak for about five minutes. If you do not rest it with this cover on, you will basically put your steak in the plate and there will be a lot of moisture in your plate, creating a bit of a mess when you actually eat. So what you want to happen is you want the moisture to solidify inside the meat. So when you put it in your plate and you cut it, it is a beautiful, nice, moist, tender piece of beautiful steak. Friends, so we love enjoying our steak with a beautiful salad such as this one and a fantastic mushroom and brandy sauce. I will put the brandy and mushroom sauce recipe in the YouTube video description. Friends, and let's um, see how the steaks look. I mean, they look phenomenal. As you can see, much of the moisture has run out. And friend, as we cut it, it's a beautiful medium steak we have here, just the way I like it. And that I will enjoy with the serving of this amazing mushroom sauce. Friends, amazing food. It was nice having a good time with you. Have a nice week. Goodbye.